Ladies and gents, I am super psyched because today I have finally got my hands on the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2. We're going to do an unboxing and full review. Let's go. Remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell if you're new and want to be notified every time I post a new video. Right, so yeah, so this arrived in the post. So what I've decided to do is straight away unbox it, show you exactly what we're talking about. And then I'm going to give you my kind of first impressions review on sort of early use over the last day or so with a view to obviously hopefully do another review maybe in a month's time or two months time after sort of real time use. I will leave all the information in the video description below as well if you do like this product after seeing this. So this is the box. You've got the just a simple mix there on the front. And then inside, here we have the phone. Before we get to that, we also have the uh, plug. You've got your charging cable there, and it is USB Type-C. And then we have one final box to open. And in here, we have a little adapter. And we have a case as well. It's quite nice. And then we have the phone. So it does have this protective cover over it, so that it's not going to get scratched in transit. Just going to take this off as well. And here we have the phone in all its glory. Okay, so this Mi Mix 2 is obviously the sequel to the original uh, Mi Mix. And that was like the first taste of this bezel-less kind of future where smartphones are kind of headed. Since then, we've obviously had like the Samsung S8, uh, the Essential Phone, the, even the new iPhone 10, which is kind of, they're shrinking the bezels. They're trying to make the screen as big as possible. Obviously, the Mi Mix wasn't the first. You had things like the Sharp uh, phone, which was out quite a long time ago. And although the original Mi Mix kind of was popular amongst critics in terms of sort of pushing the boundaries of where smartphones are going to go there was a lot of excitement a lot of hype it never really transferred into actual sales compared to what they thought i would imagine so they've kind of with the xiaomi Mi mix 2 they've kind of taken what was successful they've made a few adaptations they've altered certain things that kind of weren't that great and they've just kind of made it a more accessible phone obviously with the shrinking of the display um, it's still a big phone but it is a lot easier in the hand the nice rounded edges as well um, you can it's obviously fits really nicely in the hand there was also a lack of bands for different networks in different countries so a lot of people were finding connectivity issues uh, especially in the west like the united states the uk for example whereas obviously with the Mi Mix 2 they've now gone from 37 bands to 43 so it's now pretty much compatible with every single country and every single network which is absolutely fantastic first off the display looks absolutely beautiful it is a growing in popularity 18 by 9 ratio uh, which looks absolutely stunning in the hand. However, some content hasn't actually caught up with this yet. So you can expect when viewing media for it to actually crop the top and the bottom in for the 16 by 9 ratio. They may provide a software tweak to this so that you can actually stretch the content across the whole screen. But I'm yet to test that. Now, obviously, the display will get raved about for its appearance. Lack of bezels, beautiful, rich colors. Uh, unfortunately, however, it is only a 1080p screen. So there's no 4K. But obviously, you've got to take my unfortunately with a pinch of salt because actually in real term use I personally would find it hard to tell the difference between a 4k screen and a 1080p screen on a smartphone because obviously it is a small screen compared to like a tv for example also the term bezel-less isn't completely true as you still do have as you can see the thin bezels around the top and the sides and obviously the larger one at the bottom but obviously the screen to body ratio is still incredibly impressive now although the chin is larger than the rest of the bezels it is still smaller than last year's model and the actual selfie camera at the bottom has actually been black tinted so it's disguised much better on the display you can barely see it uh, without affecting the actual camera quality now it doesn't have hardware buttons on the bottom like a lot of smartphones at this moment in time like the OnePlus 5 for example it does have uh, some software on screen button so you've got your recent apps there you've got your home button there and you've got your back button there and they do work really really well actually for software buttons on the back straight away as you can see on here it is made of ceramic it's an absolutely beautiful design and it is a design that is crafted quite a lot by Xiaomi they do tend to like to use uh, ceramic on a lot of their smartphones uh, and it is a great product to use great protection against scratching as well compared to like aluminium for example one of the downsides that however is is the actual frame because they use uh, aluminium for the frame it doesn't have the ceramic going all the way around if you want the ceramic going all the way around you can 
but it is on the special edition version only so the actual ceramic runs all the way around from front all the way around the frames and it looks absolutely beautiful in that unibody design so yeah as you can see on here it's going to be a complete fingerprint magnet just going to hold that up already you can start to see the sort of blemishes on there but it is very easy to clean to be fair being the ceramic so i've just given that a wipe down on my trousers and straight away it's come off again so it is easy to clean but also you do get those fingerprints very very quickly so it's kind of a, a gift and a curse with this ceramic bat you have the camera with the 18 carat ring around it and the led flash next to it now first negative as you can see there it has a slight hump on that camera. I personally would prefer, especially with the 18 karat gold, I would prefer it to be completely flat to the actual casing because otherwise you are potentially going to get a few scratches here and there if you put it down on its back. Now, obviously, I love the addition of the 18 karat gold rim around the camera. It does look very premium. However, I feel there's been a bit of an admission uh, by not having the dual camera. Obviously, a lot of cam a lot of smartphones in 2017 have, have been going down the dual camera route. Um, great for photos, great for portraits, you know, nice blowing of the background, for example. Well, unfortunately, this doesn't have it. It is a, it is a single camera. And that's, to me, is although the camera's a good quality... It's a bit odd that they haven't included a dual camera when they have on the Xiaomi Mi 6, which was actually released before this phone. So they have the technology. They, you know, that one worked really well. So it seems odd that they've left this off. Obviously, it's probably down to price. It's probably down to many different things. But for me, that could potentially be a deal breaker for certain people who are very into photography on their smartphones. For some of you guys who aren't interested in photography and just want a fairly decent camera to take a lot of nice shots, then then obviously this is going to be good for you. It's completely up to you though. And obviously me personally, that is going to be a real kind of problem for me deciding what to use as my daily driver for example at this moment in time because at the moment i'm using the oneplus 5 i'm very much enjoying using that it does have the dual camera and while i think this is a better display and a better looking phone similar sort of performance overall but obviously the oneplus 5 has that dual camera so there's a sort of toss-up between the dual camera uh, on the oneplus 5 or the sort of look and screen display of this phone and that's obviously where the debate's going to lie it's not really going to be a debate i mean it's me to, if I'm debating with myself, then you've got to question the sanity of... Anyway, moving on. So, so the main camera is a 12 megapixel camera and the photos are pretty good. Images are fairly true to life, contrasts are good and also not quite as saturated as Samsung cameras for an example. So if you prefer more naturalish looking colours, then you'll probably prefer these sort of photos. If you prefer that really overly saturated, high contrasted colours on the Samsung, then you will obviously prefer the Samsung. Now in terms of the selfie camera usage, if you wanted to use it, it does actually tell you to turn your phone upside down to give you a better angle because then obviously then the selfie camera is then at the top now the selfie camera is a five megapixel shooter and it's fine in good lighting it does often suffer though in low lighting situations and the picture can become slightly grainy there is also in this device four axis optical image stabilization which is great for recording video on the move now below the camera is the fingerprint sensor and so if you like the fingerprint sensor being on the back it is in a good location similar to like the google pixel for example uh, and it works really really quickly it works every single time i've never had any problems with it and it's it's Probably the quickest one I've used to date. I mean, I'm literally pressing the home button and then opening it. Home button. Open. Open. Absolutely no hiccups whatsoever. Sound was also a bit of an issue with the original Mi Mix because they actually used a technology called cantilever piezoelectric ceramics, which basically enabled the sound to be pumped through the top of the display. Now, there are certain sensors, for example, that are still within the display in the new one, but we do now have a tiny speaker right at the top so you can actually get much clearer calls than before. So on the bottom, you have your Type-C port there. So Type-C charging, which is 3.0 uh, for fast charge so that's really good and you've got the dual speakers set up there as well the actual speaker quality when you're viewing media is pretty good without being too groundbreaking again in an ideal world i'd like to see front facing speakers uh, and one on each side preferably but obviously if you're gonna go for the ones on the bottom having two is 
generally better than one. On the left side, you have your SIM card tray. So there is a dual SIM with this phone. There isn't any expandable storage. Unfortunately, it doesn't have space for a micro SD card. So unfortunately, you will have to go with whatever... Um, sort of device you buy whether that be the 64 the 128 or the 256 gigabytes of storage all of them are quite a substantial amount of storage uh, for a phone so again it's up to you whether that's going to be a deal breaker for you i personally think that they are enough storage for normal use but again if you use your phone for a lot of different storage stuff and you need that micro sd card slot then obviously again that's going to be an issue for you and on your other side you've got your power button and your volume rockers up and down as well so this phone is actually running the snapdragon 835 processor so it's not the 836 that was rumored but at this moment in time nearly every single expensive flagship at this moment in time is running the 835 i can't think of one that's running the 836 at this moment in time but of course that will be the next step because like with everything every time a new generation of phone comes out the new generation of the processors come out so they work in tandem but this is the 835 and it comes with six gigabytes of ram obviously like i mentioned the uh, special edition which comes with a full unibody ceramic back and sides it also comes with eight gigabytes of ram so again if you want to upgrade to that they are the sort of two main things that come with that and you get it in white as well which looks pretty impressive in ceramic white to be fair okay so the battery is 3400 milliamps so without being uh, again groundbreaking it is still there or thereabouts with most of the big flagship phones and you should be able to get through the day on on pretty high use without needing to charge obviously you do have that fast charge function like i mentioned if you do need to give it a little bit of juice just to pump you through to the final stage of the day and also with the new android operating system the battery saving abilities are much better than they used to be in terms of the operating system, it is running MIUI on top of Android 7.1.1, as you can see there. And although I would prefer something a little bit more stock, personally, uh, it is very snappy, moving in and out of different sections. Um, it, you know, it works pretty much flawlessly, again, like I mentioned. It has a feel a bit like iOS, so if you are one of those people who's unsure between uh, iPhones or Android at the moment, you can kind of get the best of both worlds using this uh, operating system, like where the fact there's no app drawer, for example, everything's just on your home screen. But if you wanted something a little bit more stock, you can just download like an Android stock launcher, for example. One thing to check when you're purchasing this, if you are, is to check that you have a global version if you are looking to get it in the West, for example, uh, because it does ship with Chinese ROM or with a global ROM. Right, so now we are on to price, and this is where a lot of people sort of make their big decisions on things like smartphones when it comes down to this section, because a lot of phones at this moment in time are fairly similarly specced. Similarly? Simil similar, similarly? That's... They've got similar specs, basically, and uh, so it's going to come down to price for a lot of people. If people like two different phones the way they look and they've got similar specs, then of course the price is going to be key, obviously. So this one retails at this moment in time for a round £400, just over $500, uh, there or thereabouts. Again, the link in the description below for a place you can get it from if you want to, um, but that is the rough price that it's retailing for at this moment in time, which of course is not cheap. I'm not going to to sit here and say this is going to be one of the cheapest phones ridiculously cheap would be kind of impossible really but it is still cheaper than a lot of similar phones a lot of the other flagships like the samson uh, like the new iphone which is their their head and shoulders above in terms of price there we're talking 900 pounds dollars kind of and upwards even phones like the essential phone i believe at this moment in time is far more expensive and that's kind of a a, a new company as well so to to kind of fit in that bracket of underneath those prices but above kind of the the cheap phones based on this actual phone and based on how it runs i think that is pretty impressive i mean i'd love the phone to be 50 quid but don't think that's gonna happen <laughs> Okay, so that was my review of the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2. Let me know in the comment section below whether you think that this is going to be worth the hype. Again, it's going to be much talked about over the next couple of weeks, next month or so, um, because a lot of people are going to want to try and get their hands on it. So I do want to hear some feedback from you guys, whether this is going to be one of those moments where you're going to try and uh, get one of these in the near future, whether you're looking for it for your next daily driver or whether there's another smartphone that you're looking at potentially, whether that be because it's cheaper or whether that be because it's it's better in your opinion and 
why. Again, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to, as always, hear your thoughts. Like and share if you did enjoy the video and found it helpful. Subscribe and hit that little notification button if you want to see more smartphone reviews, Android boxes, streaming tutorials, software and hardware reviews and tutorials as well. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you in the next one. Say SBOT. Peace out.